By 22 minutes to go before the uh, top of the hour, Johannesburg Mayor Herman Mashaba delivered his State of the City address yesterday. He tabled various achievements and impending projects in the city, including a 13% increase in budget allocations for housing, transport, electricity, water and roads since the 2015-2016 financial year. And since coming into office, the multi-party government has handed out 6,659 title deeds. He also reiterated the burden of illegal immigration on services, uh, or immigrants, we should say. The event wasn't without disruptions. However, as some councillors from opposition parties walked out in the middle of the speech, accusing the mayor of using it for electioneering. To tell us more, we've got the mayor himself in studio with us. Good to see you, Mayor. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, uh, uh, Leanne, and good morning to the listeners. How difficult it is after such a, uh, a busy day yesterday to wake up at five to be here in the I morning. I know. But uh, and we appreciate much you. appreciated. Really. Yeah, thank yeah. you very, very much for coming in. A tough day, though, because, I mean, it didn't go smoothly. Uh, well, I suppose you uh, I think it, that. I think it really went beyond my expectations. I mean, those that decided to, work, uh, to walk out of council have actually demonstrated uh, to our residents in front of cameras, in front of the media, because uh, that's what they do every time in council. Uh, delay, uh, disrupt uh, proceedings of council. They, in, at the end of... Uh, uh, at the end of uh, February, when I was tabling the current, you know, when I was uh, tabling the, uh, the budget that I must uh, present at the end of this month, not a single one of them pitched up on a serious matter like this. These are elected uh, public representatives. Uh, they are people responsible to ensure that when, uh, when we table council, they must engage it, when engage their communities. Not a single one of them showed up in council. Fortunate enough, we corrected all the other parties that elected me into power. They were there and we corrected and uh, presented this, council, this budget. So yeah. this is something that people don't know. Last year, I don't know how many council meetings they walked out of on minor issues or any time when they realize that you you cannot correct they find a way uh, to walk out of council because for them walking out of council then it prevents service delivery because i cannot as government um, uh, execute some of the programs before being uh, being approved by council so it's a it's a strategy what people saw yesterday is what we go through uh, every month because obviously most of our council meetings, the media and our residents don't take interest in yeah, the matter. Yeah. So, I mean, just I, I want to delve on that for one more question and then we need to move on to, to, to the issues at hand. But they were accusing you of electioneering. They were saying, get off the podium, go to Alex, things like that, you know, um, and, and saying that you were using that platform for for not the good of the city, but rather to electioneer for the DA. Fortunate enough, uh, um, my the, my entire uh, uh, the address is there for the public to see, and I think I really want anyone to challenge anything that uh, that I've said. And, and that does it really mean uh, when I talk about uh, corruption of the previous administration? <laughs> am I lying? Do I uh, am I lying when I'm uh, when I'm saying? Ever since this multi-party government took over, just in two and a half years, we've issued uh, over 6,000 uh, title deeds. Am I lying when I'm saying that uh, we've managed, uh, when I made a statement on the 1st of December that we'll, call, we'll turn the inner city into a construction site, we've now uh, attracted 20 billion rands of construction opportunities where 11,000 people are going to get to job opportunities. Uh, they're building 6,500 units at uh, the minimum uh, rental fees of a, th of a thousand rents. Yeah, they'd like. So, fortunate enough, my entire speech is on, 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 on social media platform, forms, yeah. uh, it's on the city's website. So, I would really challenge anyone uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to verify. Unfortunately, these are painful things because uh, these are things that the NC has failed to do in the last 22 years, focused uh, purely, man, mainly on looting state resources. Okay, so let's, let's leave that for now and have a look at, uh, I mean, you often talk to, and, and we can't ignore the fact that it has been. Uh, for you, two, two years, two and a half years? Two and a half years. Two and a half years now. So, you know, in two and a half years, I suppose, this is your moment to tell us what is it that you've done for the city of Johannesburg? Because we're always looking back at the 22 years that, uh, as you say, the ANC were involved in corruption and did nothing. But in these two and a half years, what have you managed to achieve? Well, I think uh, the biggest achievement ever 
Uh, just to give a, a sense, uh, to, uh, Leanne, you know, in 2016, 2017, the city managed uh, to, uh, to attract 4.5 uh, billion rands of uh, investments in the city. And we thought it was uh, an achievement. Come seven, our first budget, 17, 18, we attracted 8.7 billion rands. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, double, uh, doubling the investment for this, uh, into the city. In this current financial year, as of February, we are already at uh, just over 12 billion rands because I've got a target. I gave the city manager a target of 16 billion rands. As of February this year, an audited 16 billion rands. So we are on track to actually double. This does not actually include uh, the 20 billion rand. So, so you can imagine for the 2019, uh, 2020. So basically, my target to the city manager is going to be in excess of 30 billion rands because he's got already 20 billion rands uh, uh, committed by the construction uh, sector. There are 70 more buildings that I've put on tender uh, last Friday. Those buildings should also yield another 70, uh, another 15 to 20 billion rands. So, I mean, the inner city, Johannesburg is going to turn into a construction site. And now, just imagine the ripple effect of a construction industry. So, what's going to happen to cement companies? What's going to happen to brick uh, uh, to manufacturers? What is going to happen to other related industries? So I think when you have government that is prepared to work for the people and, uh, and be an enabler, not uh, be to actually think that as government you are the most important thing that has ever happened. In a democratic dispensation like South Africa, in, in uh, this constitutional demo, uh, democratic dispensation, our people out there, our bosses, we have to serve them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've committed myself to do. And that is why I, that's what I've committed this multi-party government that is supporting me, that we are here to serve our residents, to make a difference, for Johannesburg to be at the economic engine of this country, if not the continent. What about the housing backlog? Because that's a serious issue. It really is. And I mean, we saw what happened in Alex. And I know that uh, we'll spend a bit of time talking about this now. But, you know, w with what happened in Alexandra and the, the, and the, the the, the, the sentiment from you was that this was actually caused by uh, ANC disruptors and you've actually reported them to the IEC and to the electoral And the police. Board and to the police. But having said that, you've been to Alexandra? You've Many seen times. what it looks I like? I've, 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 I mean, had, you, I've had uh, family in Alexandra almost uh, the last 60 there? years. Uh, could you live there? It, 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 uh, places like Alexandra, Kaya Sands, Sunspray, and some parts of Soweto. Honestly, these are things that made me to leave my business yeah. to, to say I'm not running away from this country. The constitutional dispensation signed in 1994 allows some of us privileged to actually participate uh, to stop this rot. And uh, if I look at Alexander compared to what Alexander was uh, 25 years ago, it, it really breaks one's heart. And what is actually even more in, uh, uh, disturbing and more painful that the AC government uh, many years ago came out with this uh, Alexander Renewal project. Today, uh, our forensic department, I've got a forensic team working around the clock to find out what happened to this money. One of these days, uh, we will share the, the results of this forensic investigation. And now, our people live uh, in the small area to, compounded their problem undocumented people because when people flee from uh, India, Pakistan, uh, uh, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, where do they come to? They go, go into our poor communities. So if you look at the number of undocumented people in, in Alexander, I've raised this matter, I'm sure, Leanne, you're away with mm. uh, three, in, in the two and a half years in government, I've already dealt with three Home Affairs Ministers and all three of them not interested. In fact, uh, part of the Alexander Renewal Project, some of the houses built uh, with uh, public monies for social housing, occupied by foreign nationals with uh, fraudulent documentation, reported not yesterday, not a year ago, some years ago by the residents of Alexander. Home Affairs, police, 
uh, the ANC government not uh, interested. These are the things that unfortunately when uh, obviously they confront the country, the country collapses. So we can't sit back as South Africans and allow the ANC to destroy our country. Why did you not go into Alex when they were calling for you? I know you said it wasn't on your schedule and no, you were very, I think, very busy. Okay, let me but just share with you. Don't you think they damaged the let me really, No, in fact, I think it, it is really very good uh, that uh, for, for some reason God made it possible to expose, expose this criminal the first time when, uh, the, when this matter was brought to my office that morning, I had an emergency I couldn't get out of. And I sent uh, MMC son, one of my senior cabinet ministers, how, how Michael son was abused, racially abused in this, this democratic South Africa. Someone who is a public service, a servant, a South African, a lawyer trained at VETS, uh, abused by ANC along racial grounds calling him Chinese, calling him all sorts of abusive language. That's what made me really cross. And immediately, I then went to really send people on the ground and talk to people in Alexander. People of Alexander said to me, this project of Alexander started uh, by the homeowners, but unfortunately it's been hijacked by ANC and the criminality. Don't really waste your time. Don't deal with criminals. Don't give them the platform that they want because their agenda is to make jo the city of Johannesburg ungovernable, starting with Alexander. So I know that the IEC have said that they will rule on this, your complaint, before the elections. Have you heard anything as yet? Uh, not as yet. Uh, of uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the South African Human Rights Commission. Actually, last night I was here at SAPC when I got home. There was a, uh, an email uh, from the South African Human Rights Commission asking for protection for JMPD because they are also working on this particular matter. So I'm, I'm really glad that uh, uh, say, uh, Chapter 9 institutions are taking interest in this matter. Our own internal uh, forensic uh, unit, uh, we've got an outside uh, professional forensic investigators working on this. And the information that's actually coming out of this are going to shock this, this nation. All right. That, uh, that NC can get to, to that level of criminality. All right, we'll wait for we'll wait for all of that to come out, and uh, until then, let's let's talk about the, the the actual people at the end of the line, because the actual people are the residents of Joburg, absolutely, who are and that is what I said. And are frustrated. And I, and, I, uh, and I challenge and I invite our residents to go on our on the city's website. My entire speech is there, okay. where it, it illustrates our failures, our successes, because uh, I inherited a city with 170 billion rands infrastructure backlog. I inherited a city with over 300,000 housing backlog. So the, the, the situation is, is dire. How uh, much housing have you done? Let's talk about that. No, there's a backlog. How much have you managed to achieve in your time? What are the, the numbers are in, uh, God, uh, the, you know, in, my, in the morning like this, but we, we've actually achieved much more than the NC has ever uh, achieved. So the, the, the numbers are in, 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 my, in my speech. The roads. In terms the, of, uh, the road and, and, in and one thing that, uh, that, that, that I've really very made clear, because what has happened ever since I took over, the NC government started cutting on my housing grant. When the, in the 2015-16, they had half a billion rand uh, grant uh, to, uh, for the NC to build this uh, failed RDP housing uh, plans. Today, in my current budget, only 245 million rand. They actually have to my, 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 uh, my grant for housing. Over and above that, uh, MEC of uh, uh, Cocta, uh, uh, MEC Muila, in December, before even half a year end, wanted to take 180 million rands of that. Uh, fortunate enough, I threatened him with uh, the court proceedings. And uh, the, when I came back in January, fortunate enough, he managed to reverse uh, that. So that is why the inner city rejuvenation plan, giving this hijacked uh, buildings to the private sector to build affordable accommodation for our people. Because these RDP houses focused uh, in far lying areas continuing with the uh, apartheid special uh, planning where people uh, are forced to live in places like uh, the Orange Farm, 60, 80 kilometers uh, from their places of work. I want our people to really live, work and play in the inner city and the surrounding areas. And I'm sure you're aware at end of February when the NC was not in council, we managed as a city of Johannesburg to pass another historic policy called the inclusionary housing uh, policy where 
future developments in the inner city of Johannesburg, 30% of that must be for affordable accommodation so that anyone earning six, ten thousand rents, you can afford to live in St. and Bryanston and pay rentals uh, as low as nine, at 900,000 rents a month. So we have to stop uh, this, uh, what happened since 1994, where developments, as you're aware, housing developments went through like a rock. But what happened? Building housing for rich people. We forgot about the missing middle. We forgot about our students. Our students uh, at, uh, in Johannesburg, because Johannesburg, we house two of the big universities, Avet uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah. uh, and UJ and University of South Africa. I've got students in the city of Johannesburg who sleep in libraries on the streets in the morning. They've got to find somewhere where can they wash and go to, 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 uh, to school. This is totally unacceptable. Indeed and uh, is, and, and, is. And, uh, and education is not our, our and, competence. And I think one of the big points you're bringing up here is we're heading into elections now. And it seems that having a municipal party or a government run by one municipal party and another run by the provincial just does not work. And no, coalitions do just don't work. Well, I it, think... It, it, uh, it, what I'm hearing is this is the failure of government because at the end of the day, as much as... Uh, you know, the province might be cutting back on the amount of money that they're giving you for housing, the people suffer. The fights between the EFF and the DA and other coalitions, the people suffer. Walking out, as you yourself said, in the legislature, uh, service delivery is put to a halt because nobody discusses anything, the people suffer. Well, uh, Do look these at things the, really work? No, but uh, uh, the Leanne, look at uh, in, NC 25 years, dominance. They had uh, at one stage up to 69%. Dominant political system does not work uh, in South Africa. It has, uh, people were abused, I think, and personally believe, and, and I really pray, come uh, next week, the 8th, I would really like uh, to see this country then at least for another 50 years to operate under uh, a coalition arrangement. Because when you operate under a coalition arrangement like here in Johannesburg, even if I was corrupt for some reason, I had no chance because I'm accountable to so many political parties. Uh, five small uh, parties, uh, the biggest being the, the IFP with five uh, the councillors. But on the other hand, I've got the EFF, and the EFF does not have uh, any formal arrangements with us. Uh, EFF supports my programs on an issue-by-issue -issue basis. So basically, my government is totally dependent on engagement and engagement on total good faith, make sure that there's oversight. Whereas uh, the dominance has proven uh, with beyond any reasonable doubt that dominance is not good for, for our democracy and we've got to stop it. We've got to make sure that uh, personally I call on South Africans, uh, we've got to take ANC out of government, let's put in a multi-party government in power so that political parties must hold uh, one another accountable, not in parliament, in real government. Okay. And municipal government, that is where service delivery happens. Yeah, very quickly, two issues to talk to. Um, I'm hoping that we'll extend just to, to the news bulletin. Uh, firstly, the city and load shedding. I know that you mentioned that you have a solution towards load shedding. What is that solution? What are you proposing? Well, I'm re proposing, uh, uh, when I took over this uh, government, uh, remember many years ago, the Kelvin Power Station was closed. And uh, during uh, the last uh, load shedding, the city of Johannesburg with ESCOM made arrangements for the private sector to open uh, the uh, Kelvin uh, the substation supplying uh, 200 uh, the megawatts on only. That's what uh, they have, they are producing right now. That, uh, that substation has got a capacity to increase uh, to 600 megawatts. And uh, I've already uh, uh, made uh, my intentions known. I've already dispatched the city manager and the legal team to go and negotiate uh, with uh, Kelvin Power Station to increase their capacity. We'll give them long-term uh, contracts as the city of Johannesburg, we'll, but we want good prices, better than what ESCOM uh, can give us. Because one thing for sure, I'm not confident that ESCOM, after being looted for all these years, will be able to recover. But at the same time, I'm running a city yeah. and an economic engine of this country I need to ensure that I have uninterrupted uh, power supply and we look at other independent suppliers if anyone opposes that 
fortunate enough, the courts are here. I will, I will not hesitate to use the courts to ensure that uh, um, I take politics out of service delivery for our people. Uh, road infrastructure. Now, I know that the M2 is closed. You were saying that you're hoping that that's going to be open by October. Not hoping. It is going it will to be open by October. Open by but some October. of the roads, Mayor, are atrocious here in Johannesburg. You know, I was, but that's the one thing that you really do sort of, you drive on it every day, all these roads, the potholes, the state of the roads, the city is still very dirty. And that's another big problem. Mm. I mean, I'll just give you an example. This weekend, we drove over a pothole where all four tires of ours burst. This pothole has been sitting there for six months. What's going on there? Uh, uh, Lien, uh, I think I don't, uh, I'm sure you remember in November of 2017, um, uh, I had a press conference. Uh, the document is also there on our website. I'm happy to, to, for the, our communities to see. There's 170 billion rands worth of infrastructure backlog. 11 point and net for our roads to be at the state where you don't have to have uh, the potholes uh, that can be resurfaced and build new roads. The city of Johannesburg requires uh, 11.8 billion rands just on roads alone. And if you look at our current uh, capex for everything, oh, just over 8 billion. So it, it's a crisis because over the last uh, the, 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 the 22 years of ANC government on repairs and maintenance, Never spend under uh, uh, the maximum, not spend two uh, percent. Right now, in this current financial year, I guarantee our residents that our repairs and maintenance will go up to five percent, because we need while we build the new infrastructure, we need to maintain the the, the, the existing one. But I'm sitting with 170 billion rands uh, infrastructure backlog. It's not okay. just roads. What, what about our sewer and water the, infrastructure? Everything, everything. What about electricity? Everything, uh, Mayor. I live here. I know. I so, see it. And, and, uh, and it is worrying. But please uh, read uh, through that. Indeed. And I really uh, ask our residents uh, to really read what we are doing in terms of our in, uh, electricity infrastructure. Okay. We are actually today, as part of government, uh, does, uh, getting savings out of uh, some of the projects that we run. We finished, uh, we just completed the savings, uh, 1.2 billion rands uh, infrastructure to, uh, to build a new s substation so okay. that we can uh, minimize load shading. All right. Uh, May I've got to leave it there, but, but thank you. Thank you for your time and uh, for updating us on, on some of the issues here in the city and, and some of the outstanding issues as well that still need. But it is 7 o'clock. We need to get our news. Johannesburg Mayor Herman Mashaba talking to us always, quite frankly, on the state of the city in Johannesburg. And also that was uh, delivered yesterday by the mayor himself.